you know, we pray that we could be a light to our community and reach people and get to know them, and that's going on here next door. God answered that prayer and continues to answer that prayer. Um, I pray every day that God would um, bless the young people at Central Baptist and raise up a generation of young people who would uh, serve him all the days of their life. And I pray for uh, our children in the church here who are not yet saved that they'll come to know Christ as Savior. And that's an answer to prayer tonight. And I pray that there'll be a mighty army for the Lord out in the world being a light in the darkness. And I hear of young people praying for their teachers. And um, then we have a teenager read a missionary letter. you know. And I thank the Lord for his answered prayers. And just sometimes, you know, I think we overlook, you know, we, we, maybe we pray for something big and we got the something we're fixated on and then we pray for other things on a routine basis and God answers these things and sometimes we overlook them because we're looking at that one thing that's really in front of us. And uh, God brought that to my heart tonight, you know, just to be thankful for those, those daily prayers that we pray and when he answers those, to be thankful for them. And so what a blessing it is to be here tonight. And if you don't come to church on Wednesday night, you miss things like that. You know, you miss those little blessings, those big blessings um, that God does um, in a church family. So praise the Lord for his goodness to us. Luke 24 tonight, and uh, we're going to start um, in verse 19. Uh, this is the account um, after Jesus' resurrection. There are men walking on the road to Emmaus, and they're questioning you know, that they've, everything they've believed, two disciples are questioning everything they believed about Jesus. Is it true now that he's dead? Um, you know, what, what's going to happen to them? Is, is any of it true? Did they believe a lie? They're sad, the Bible says. They're, they're crushed. And Jesus, they don't know it's him, um, but Jesus comes up to them as they're walking in verse 16. And he says, you know, what manner of communications are these that you're sad? And they said, don't you know, haven't, you know, are you a stranger? Haven't you heard what's gone on in Jerusalem? And um, he says, what things, in verse 19. And the God who knows everything asks a question to get him to talk. Let's look at that. So we pick up on that account. Two disciples walking to the road of Emmaus. Jesus joins them. They don't know it's him yet. Verse 19, and he said unto them, what things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. When they found not his body, they came, saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even so as the women had said, but him they saw not. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto the village whither they went, and he made as though as he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And we mention this um, as a way of... The, the title of this message is, this lesson, this devotion is the fellowship of the burning heart. And we know what the Bible goes on to say in this account that those men said, didn't our hearts burn within us as he talked with us in the way? Didn't our hearts burn within us? And there's a couple things I want to pull out from this passage that God has just given me recently in the study. Um, in verse 19, Jesus asked a two-word question. He says, what things? What things are you talking about? What things took place? He encourages them to talk with him about things. Things he has accomplished. He personally accomplished. He personally experienced these things. 
He oversaw and ordained these things and knew more about them than they did. Yet, he said, talk to me about these things. And that encourages me because the Lord wants us to talk to him about things. The things that he already knows about. The things that he has ordained and allowed in our life. Uh, the things that, uh, that he has accomplished. He wants us to talk to him about these things. And can't you see it in your prayer time as you go to him and, and uh, he knows everything. He knows our hearts. He knows what we have need before we ask. But he says, what things? He desires to have fellowship with us. Jesus desires to have communion with his people. He let them explain that they thought God was in this whole Jesus thing. And that they thought that he was the Messiah. But he's been dead for three days. He let them explain these things about himself. You know, I wonder why they didn't remember that he had said to them, after three days I will rise again. Why didn't they remember that? And here they are explaining it out loud to a stranger about how the one they believed was the Messiah has been dead and people that they know have said they've seen him alive, but we haven't seen him. And they still were blinded. They still were blocked from the truth. But I love how the Lord allowed them to talk about things. What was on their heart. He says there, what communications are these he says, I can look at you and tell you you're sad. And he let them talk about the things that made them sad. Aren't you thankful for a God like that? That even the, the things that we may say are small in his sight, he still wants to hear us talk about these things. And then I love, um, as it goes on there in verse uh, 25, it says, then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Did you know he still wants to do that today? He still, Jesus still wants to expound through all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Uh, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit of God is there to guide us in all truth. And when we open up this book and we read his word and we study and we meditate, the Holy Spirit's job is to guide us, to expound to us the scriptures, the things concerning himself. He did that that day as those men literally walked down the road to Emmaus. And he will still do that today as we walk with him. If we'll walk with him and take time with Jesus, he will still expound to us the things concerning himself in the scriptures. You want to learn more about the Bible? Learn from the one who spoke it. Isn't that incredible? That we don't have to wonder. He will explain it if we'll walk with him. If we'll let him. And he still wants to explain the things concerning himself. I wonder tonight, do we read his word? Now, do we read his word expecting to hear from him? That's another thing. We get dry in our, in our Christian lives, don't we? All of us get to points where we get dry. And our Bible reading might just be a routine or a uh, going through the motions. We get there from time to time. And then you have those times when you just, you need the Lord and you dig in and you ask him, I need to hear from you, and he expounds. To us the things concerning himself do we meditate on his word do we ask for understanding do we choose to believe what he says do we believe it when he tells us do we search the scriptures until our hearts burn within us that's deep right there do we walk with the lord until our hearts burn within us until the until it comes off the page like an hd tv right uh, how many of you have an HDTV? Those are awesome things, aren't they? I remember before we had one, we had the big TV that was like, you know, this wide and this deep. You know what I'm talking about? And, uh, and it had the curved front screen and it was all pixelated. And I remember people telling me how great HDTV was. And I'm thinking, honestly, how good can it be? You know, you can, you, you, what more could you possibly see? And then I remember we may be at somebody's house or Walmart or whatever, 
And it was like that moment, oh, <laughs> you know, you're staring at the screen and you're like, whoa. I remember watching a baseball game and as the guy ran to first base, you could see the, the dirt coming off of his cleats and you could see individual blades of grass and you could see the whites of their eyes and the color of their eyes and the stitches in their hat and it's like, I didn't know I've been living this way, you know, and uh, I think we put a second mortgage on the house and bought one, you know, but, but it was like this revelation where what I thought I was seeing was clear, and then you see an HD TV, and you're like, well, I haven't seen anything yet. Well, that's kind of how our time with God can be. Sometimes we see stuff, but then other times when we're walking with God and our heart burns within us, wow. It just clears up, and it's like we've never really seen before. It's like we've really never heard from him before, and those moments are precious. Those times when you walk with God, and he is there, and he burns within your heart, and the tears start running down your face because you realize this isn't a fairy tale. This isn't pretend. This is a living God fellowshipping with me. Man, there's something special about that. And it makes you want to come back for more. And you can't wait till the next day till you get to your prayer time and your Bible reading time. And you sit down or you kneel down and you come thirsty. You come hungry. And you say, okay, Lord, let's do it again today. Those are precious times. And these men experienced one of those burning heart moments with Jesus. Do we take the time to let it burn within us? Then in verse 28, and they drew nigh into the village where they went, whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. Do you see the, the Lord's heart there? He wanted to stay with them. He made as though he would have gone further. But he really desired to stay with them. He wanted to spend more time with them. Man, doesn't that do your heart good? You know Jesus wants to spend more time with you? Do you know he wants to have more quiet time, more fellowship time, more Bible time, more prayer time? He wants to tarry with you. He wants to stick around and, and be there a little bit longer. And in verse 29, this is great. But they constrained him, saying, abide with us. No, 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 you need to stay. Come on, it's, it's late. Look what they said. For it's toward evening, and the day is far spent. It's getting dark out there, man. Just come on in, have some supper with us, and hang out with us for the rest of the night. Tomorrow morning, you can get on your way. They wanted to spend time with this guy. By the way, they did not know yet was Jesus, but there was something about him. They couldn't put their finger on it at the moment, but there was something about that, him that had their hearts burning. And here's what I love. He wants to spend time with us. I wonder, brothers and sisters, do we ever constrain him? Do we ever say, Lord, stay. Come on, spend more time with me. He wants to spend more time with us. Do we ever ask for more with him? I wonder when we come into his house on Sundays or Wednesdays, do we say, Lord, I want you to come here. I want you to come in with me. And we don't walk through those doors alone, but we walk in with him. We don't, we don't uh, sit in our pew and see if the singer or the preacher can make him show up. You know what I mean? We don't try to manufacture something, uh, a feeling or, or an atmosphere to make it seem like something's happening. I wonder if we walked in to church or before we even got to church said, Lord, come with me. Stay here with me. Do we ever pray when we come to church, Lord, show up and do something in my heart? God, I want you to be real today. I want you to, to speak through that song. I want you to speak through the message. I want to speak through the lesson. Lord, I want you to change my heart today. Do we feel that way? Because he wants to be with us. I wonder, do we ever constrain him? Do we ever hang on to him? Instead of, instead of cutting our prayer time short or cutting our Bible reading short, do we ever say, you know, I really don't have time, but I'm going to keep going? Don't we do that with other things? I really don't have time to do this, but there's only 10 more minutes of this show and I'll sleep this weekend, right? Or I really don't have time for this, but I'm gonna, whatever it is. I wonder, do we ever say, I really, you know, this is a crunch of my time, but I can, Lord, I can give you 15 more minutes. Would you, would you meet with me still? He's never gonna turn you down. But that's their heart. And I wonder if that would be our heart. The fellowship of the burning heart those times with God where he's doing something in your heart and you don't want it to stop. 
And I hope that's our devotional life and we can all have that if we'll just spend time with him, walk with him. All right, that's why.